and I don't mean to use Monsanto as the whipping boy, but they seem to have the biggest name in the industry, so please uh, let me use them as an example. When you see Monsanto or one or two individuals who may work or be a lobbyist for Monsanto uh, contributing money uh, to four or five of our state representatives or to our county councilmen, then you begin to be concerned that you uh, uh, you want to find the interest, you, you follow the money. And, uh, and that is uh, w perfectly legal, as I say, within our system. But the issue I'm saying is, it was a surprise to me, the inroads and the impact that uh, the state uh, has made on a GMO and agri in our agricultural policy in the state over the past 15 or 20 years uh, and the significant amount of uh, impact this has had on the university grants and so forth, which clearly is a funnel or a venue for uh, large corporations uh, to become much more uh, intricately involved in this. And I'm not saying any of that necessarily is wrong. I'm simply saying they've done this below the radar without full knowledge. And then we have an uh, idiotic bill, in my opinion, uh, House Bill 1226. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, that is the height of arrogance on the part of of uh, big corporations uh, being fostered by local representatives who clearly should know better. Uh, and to have our state representatives vote in favor of that bill without the public being fully aware of what it means, uh, I've got a problem with that. What, what does that uh, bill entail? What's, what's the well, briefly what it entails is a surrender of what we've called home rule on uh, our agricultural policy and GMO issues now and into the future, with the exception that they've grandfathered our significant advance on the ban of GMO research and development on coffee and taro. What the bill basically says is the state, state legislature, and the counties will not have the authority or the ability to weigh in on any issue in the future that happens to be GMO related. I'm not just talking about distribution, not talking about labeling, I'm talking about production, I'm talking about research. Bill 1226 prohibits any interference in that uh, arena. That is incredible. Uh, by the way, can I be any stronger than that? Uh, <laughs> no, why, why do you think they're doing it? Why, what well, are the power, what's the power influence here? Well, is it, is it I mean, on, on a practical basis, sure. let's face it, Hawaii functions as a great laboratory for GMO. I mean, you know, we are situated 2,200 or so miles in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on individual islands, and if anything goes wrong, God forbid, anything goes wrong, the damage is limited. I understand that. We are a good laboratory geographically for this. And I understand perfectly the interest of uh, the corporations in using Hawaii in that manner. I don't know that I have a problem necessarily with that. I'd rather see research, if you will, and uh, some uh, economic uh, benefits be derived from that research if it's properly controlled, carefully maintained and inspected and secured. Uh, here in Hawaii, I think that could be a reasonable basis to continue. Certainly, you don't want to have it done in the middle of California, uh, and if something goes wrong, you've infected, uh, you know, half our agricultural produce for the western uh, United States. There seems to be reticence on the part of Monsanto and other companies to properly label their products. They know that it causes significant economic uh, questions uh, for their distribution system when people look at that and say, GMO, I'm not, uh, there's a reticence 
to uh, to buy that product. So it's a it's an advertising gimmick. It's a um, uh, it's clearly it would have a, uh, impact on their bottom line. I I think to a certain degree the university is caught in the same situation. They know that they have a great deal of money being given to them under the grants that they receive from state and federal government and from corporations to continue this research somewhere in Hawaii. If it's not done on the Big Island, somewhere in Hawaii. Uh, it, uh, it's very hard for the university to turn that down. That's a big source of income. People don't understand that. If we take those grants away entirely, how do we? How does the university subsidize normal classroom operations? It's not all, you know. It's uh, we, we need to find then quote another bill payer to maintain the university system. I understand that. I don't know the amount that we're talking about, but it's very clear to me. Again, it's an economic situation. Money talks, and it talks here very loudly. The the emphasis that I would try to make, however, is that uh, uh, as long as Monsanto, the university, and others who are in the GMO field continue to try to hide, either implicitly or on purpose, the intent and the extent of their operations, they're always going to feel as though they're behind the power curve. They're always going to feel as though someone is going to throw, um, uh, you know, doo-doo into their, into their operation. And the public reaction is going to be, what are you hiding? Why don't you come clean? Why don't you explain to us all the things that are going on? Why don't you give us an opportunity to be better educated? Now, as long as that attitude continues, uh, as long as people who are, as I say, involved in this, continue to try to hide, and I don't mean that surreptitiously, but to not to publicize what they're doing, that's the reaction. And I'm sorry, I completely agree with the public's approach. What are we doing? Why are we not more above board? Why don't we label our goods? Why is it so important that one-third of the rest of the world will uh, do this, but we don't. What are we? What are we protecting? And at the moment, we're protecting uh, money to interest. I've got a problem with that.